Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to make an easy sublimation t-shirt. If you've been making iron-on vinyl shirts, you might be wondering, what is the big deal about sublimation anyway, and how is it different from iron-on vinyl? So let me show you the basics by walking you through making a sublimation t-shirt from start to finish the easiest way possible. Come with me to my craft table and I will show you everything. So what's the difference between a sublimated shirt and an iron-on vinyl shirt? First, they look and feel different. When you look at a sublimated shirt next to an iron-on vinyl shirt, you can see the difference right away. While the iron-on vinyl has been fused to the shirt using high heat, it stays solid and sits on top of the fibers, almost like a sticker. Sublimation, on the other hand, uses heat to turn an ink design into a gas, which dyes the shirt's fibers before returning back to a solid. You cannot feel the sublimation design on the shirt. It's entirely smooth without any edges that can wrinkle, crack, or peel. It's super cool. Second, sublimated shirts last longer than iron-on vinyl shirts. A sublimation shirt on the proper material will last as long as the material itself, whereas an iron-on vinyl shirt will begin to lift, crack, and peel after roughly 50 washes or less if it wasn't applied properly. So there's really a lot of benefit to sublimating a shirt. So, how do you do it? The sublimation process requires a few things to create the best results. The fastest way to create sublimation projects on your own is with a sublimation printer. I'm using my Epson EcoTank with sublimation ink, but you can also use a purpose-built sublimation printer like the Sawgrass. If you're working on your very first sublimation project, be sure to follow my beginner sublimation videos at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation printers to set up your printer properly. You'll also need a device that you can connect to your printer. I'm using a Mac, but you can also use Windows computers. They work basically all the same for this. You can work from some mobile devices, but you might have limited options, so try using a desktop or laptop first if you're able to do so. And while there are lots of ways to print your sublimation designs, I'm going to show you my favorite way. It's free, available to everyone, Mac or Windows, and super easy to use. All you need is internet and the Google Chrome browser, which is also free. We'll also need a heat source. I'm going to use my Cricut Auto Press right here, but you can also use a Cricut Easy Press or a traditional heat press. Just make sure your heat press can get up to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit and you have a properly protected pressing area. To make our t-shirt, I'm going to use a white Cricut t-shirt. Sublimation works best on shirts with a high polyester count. And these are 95% polyester with a bit of spandex for comfort. Technically, sublimation will work on materials with 65% polyester or higher, like this shirt. But I got the brightest and crispest results the closer I went to 100% polyester. Avoid 100% cotton shirts, and I'll show you why later. You can use some cotton blend shirts, however, and I tested a few shirt blends, so stay tuned for my results. You'll also need some sublimation paper. I'm using 125 gram, eight and a half by 11 inch paper by ASUB. You can use regular like laser paper, but I think you'll get better and more consistent results if you use sublimation paper. A few other materials will help you sublimate safely and effectively. White cardstock and white butcher paper to protect the press and the pad, and some scissors and heat resistant tape to get the perfect transfer. And remember how I said that the sublimation ink turns into a gas to dye the fibers? That does produce fumes, which you should not breathe in. Ventilation is very important when sublimating, so have some windows open, turn on a fan, and don't put your face close to your project until the fumes have dissipated. Remember, safety first. Now that we have the basics down, let's go over the steps to sublimate a t-shirt. Step one, get or prepare a sublimation shirt design. 
You can use any of my free sublimation shirt design files. To find them, go to jennifermaker.com slash 394 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the design by searching the page for design number 394 and then click it to download a zip file with high quality design files, perfect for sublimation. The four designs I've included have positive sayings with beautiful watercolor backgrounds. The variation of watercolor is a great use of sublimation's abilities. The first design says, live a colorful life on a round rainbow background with a pretty heart. The second says, the future is bright on a soft teal background. The third says, be a pop of color in a black and white world on this pretty orange. And the last is, it's not all rainbows and sunshine, but a good amount actually is, on a fun rainbow background. You can also make your own sublimation print designs. I provided the blank background designs free to get you started. Today, I'm going to make the rainbows and sunshine designs because I love both of them so much. Now, what size you make your design depends on your shirt size and your own personal preferences. I've added some helpful diagrams to the blog post for this tutorial, which you can find over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation t-shirts, and that will help you determine the best size for your size shirt. I'm going to test my designs on an adult large t-shirt today, so I won't make them any larger than 10 and a half inches wide and 12 and a half inches tall. If you use my designs to print and transfer, I've listed the best print dimensions for this shirt on my blog post. Once you've picked a design, you'll need to print it on a good quality sublimation paper for the best results. While you can use copy paper, in my opinion, it just isn't as good as sublimation paper. Uh, feel free to experiment, but I recommend sublimation paper. Now I'm using a sub paper in my Epson EcoTank using Hippo ink. You can of course do this on another sublimation printer with different sublimation ink and paper too. There are lots of ways to print your design, but I'll show you my favorite method. Google Docs. Yes, really, the free online document editor. It works really well. Here's how. Go to Google Docs in the Google Chrome web browser on your computer at google.com slash docs slash about. You can also download and open the Google Docs app on a phone or tablet, but be aware that you won't be able to install or access any printer profiles from a mobile device. If you don't have a Google account, no problem. They're free and easy to get. Just visit google.com slash docs slash about for help getting one set up. To begin, click on blank to open a new document. In the top file menu, select page setup. Change your margins to zero by clicking in each box and typing zero and change your paper size to match your sublimation paper size. I'll use eight and a half by 11 letter size, and then click OK. Now click on the Insert menu at the top and select Image, and select Upload from Computer. Locate the sublimation design that you want to use. So if you're using the one you'll, that I made, look for the folder that you downloaded from my library. I'm gonna use the rainbows design. Then click open. The image will appear and fill your page. But it won't necessarily come in at the original design size. And that's okay because we want to resize it to fit our shirt anyways. For an adult large size shirt, we can make the design up to 10 and a half inches wide or 12 and a half inches tall. But remember to stick to your paper size. I'm using letter size paper, so I'm not going to go any wider than 11 and a half inches. To resize the design, select the image and then click and drag a corner until it fits the page. Or you can right click the image, select image options, and then size and rotation and change the size in the fields. Next, you want to make sure the design will print in the right spot on your paper. 
To reposition the image, select it and then click on Wrap Text from the menu that appears below. You might have to hover your cursor at the bottom of the image to bring up the menu. Now you can click and drag the image anywhere on your page. I recommend putting your design in the center of your page as that ensures it won't get cut off at the edges and you have plenty of space to feather the sides for a clean press. I'll show you that trick when we get to the pressing stage. Once you're happy with the design, give it a name by clicking where you see Untitled in the top left field. Another great thing about Google Docs is the auto saving feature. No more losing your work if you forget to save every few minutes. I love that. Now before you print, make sure your paper is loaded correctly into your printer. Check your printer manual and paper packaging for help identifying the right side to print on and how to load it. If you're using a sub paper in an EcoTank printer like I am, place your paper face down with the words a sub visible so that the design will print on the bright white side of the sublimation paper, just like this. I'll show you the printing steps for an Epson printer first and then a sawgrass for those of you who have one. While printer settings do vary, the main things we have to watch for are paper type and print quality. All right, let's do the Epson print method. If you have an Epson, go to the file menu and choose print. Select your printer under destination then click the arrow beside more settings and click print using system dialog. Make sure your sublimation printer is selected under printer. Then under layout, click flip horizontally to mirror your image. Most sublimation projects need to be mirrored, so remember that step. Choose print settings and change your media type to presentation, paper, mat, and change your print quality to best quality. Now we've already mirrored the image, so don't click that box and don't use high speed. If you see that option, do not click it. If you've installed an ICC printer profile for better colors, which I covered in my sublimation printer setup videos at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation printers, you can select that here as well. Select color matching and choose your printer profile. If you're on a Mac as I am, you'll want to choose color sync, click on the menu, select other profiles and select your printer profile from the list. Once you've correctly adjusted your settings for your printer, click on presets and choose save current settings as a preset and then you can choose that from now on to make this whole process go much faster. All right, let's talk about how to do this with the sawgrass. So to print on a sawgrass from Google Docs, go to the file menu, choose print, and select your printer under destination. Then click the arrow beside more settings and click print using system dialog. And this is where the steps change from the Epson. Select the PDF menu in the lower left corner and choose sawgrass print manager. If you're having an issue finding this, look for your print options and select Sawgrass Print Manager as your printer. This is the only way to access the helpful ICC printer profiles that Sawgrass provides. Now your window might look different than mine, but choose your settings that match your shirt. For mine, I'll set the substrate, and that means the surface that we're sublimating onto, to polyester, and the paper to type A, because that matches the A sub paper. Again, I recommend high quality over high speed. And Sawgrass automatically knows that we want to mirror our design, so we don't uncheck that box by accident. Then look at the preview on the right and make sure your design looks correct. If it doesn't, Click cancel and make any adjustments that you need until you're happy. And finally, click the pink print button and watch the magic happen. Step two, prepare your print and shirt for sublimation. Here's how my design printed out. Now it doesn't quite look like it did on the screen, right? It's a lot duller and less vibrant. And that's okay. That's what it's supposed to look like when it prints on this sublimation paper like this. Once we add heat and pressure, that's when the magic happens. 
Now trim the paper close to the design to avoid getting lines at the edges of the paper when you transfer it onto your shirt. Polyester has a memory and it will remember those lines. Okay, you can also gently tear the edges to smooth out the transition. Tearing also prevents any lines of sublimation ink that might have snuck onto the edge of your paper undetected. I always make it a rule to cut or tear the edges of my printed sublimation prints for the best results, and I recommend you do the same thing. Now set your heat press to a temperature between 385 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 196 to 204 degrees Celsius. And we're doing that to warm it up in advance. I'm using the Cricut Auto Press, and I find that shirts work best with this at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit with a time of 60 seconds. You can also use a traditional heat press or a Cricut Easy Press, of course. Do not, however, use a household iron as it just won't get hot enough or give you a consistent press. Now, since sublimation does create fumes, be sure to open your windows and turn on a fan to craft safely. Remember, safety first. I'm going to show you how to press a design using white 95% polyester shirt that I got from Cricut. For this project, don't use anything less than a 65% polyester shirt or your ink will be faded and eventually disappear in the wash. So 65% or higher and the blend can be cotton or spandex or rayon or anything else really. Just 65% polyester or higher. Now, you don't have to pre-wash your shirt if you don't want to. In fact, some manufacturers suggest that you don't pre-wash at all before you press. My personal rule is that I'll pre-wash if it's for me or a family member, but I don't pre-wash if I'm going to gift it or sell it. It's your choice, however. But do be sure to lint roll the shirt to remove any dust, dander, or pet hair, because those can cause strange dots and marks and sublimate right into the surface of your shirt. And for a professional result, add a vertical crease to help you get your design centered. To do this, fold your shirt in half vertically, make sure that your sleeves and the sides are perfectly aligned, and press it for 10 seconds along the crease. When you open it up, you'll have a nice center line. And pressing it like this also serves as the preheat, removing moisture and ensuring a good transfer. Preheating is important for a really good sublimation transfer, so please don't skip over this step. Now unfold your shirt and lay it face up on the pressing area. Slide a piece of white cardstock inside the shirt where your design will appear. This will protect the back layer of your shirt from any sublimation ink that may bleed through. Now gently fold your printed design the same way as the shirt and crease it at the top and the bottom of the paper. Don't fold through any of the inked image, however, just the parts that don't have ink on them. Since I'm making a crew neck t-shirt, the top of the design should start about two inches below the collar. For more tips on placing your sublimation designs on t-shirts in the optimal position, check out the blog post for this tutorial. Now lightly place the design ink side down on the preheated shirt, lining up the creases. Secure the design with heat resistant tape on all four edges of your transfer to keep it in place and prevent ghosting or fuzzy images. Do not skip over this step. Now place a piece of white uncoated butcher paper larger than your heat plate on top of your t-shirt. Do not use parchment paper, wax paper, freezer paper, or even Teflon paper, as these will trap moisture and can produce fuzzy transfers. I also recommend you avoid colored butcher papers, as sometimes they're actually dyed and that color can transfer to your shirt. Step three, press your sublimation print. Once your heat source reaches the right temperature, you're ready to go. 
If you're using the Cricut Auto Press as I am, the pressure is set for you automatically and you don't have to worry about it. If you're using an Easy Press, you'll want to use light pressure, which means that you're mostly just pressing down lightly with one hand. If you're using a traditional heat press, you'll want light to medium pressure, about 40 PSI. I'm going to demonstrate how to press using my auto press so that you'll just press the lid down to close it and start the pressing process. The auto press conveniently comes straight down onto the transfer, which is perfect for sublimation. You want your press to come down as straight as possible if you're using something other than the auto press. Press your shirt for 45 to 60 seconds. If you're not sure whether to go with 45 or 60 seconds, start with 45 seconds. Some experimentation is normal if you're using a different shirt or press. If your transfer looks dull or washed out when you're done, that means you should press for longer next time. If your transfer has a brown or a yellow hue, you pressed it for too long. Always take notes. If you're using the auto press, it will automatically open when it's done. If you're using the Cricut Easy Press, lift it up straight from your shirt. The pressing area and materials will still be hot, so be careful. You can remove the butcher paper, but leave the t-shirt in place without moving it so it can cool down because it's still sublimating for about 10 to 15 seconds afterwards. And if you move the t-shirt immediately, it could make the image ghost and look blurry. So when you're confident that your shirt has cooled down, remove the tape and the paper. Step back and enjoy your gorgeous, full-color, sublimated t-shirt. Isn't this amazing? So our shirts turned out amazing, don't you think? So let's see how they looked on shirts with different amounts of polyester and different colors. Here is our white Cricut shirt with 95% polyester. This shirt sublimated the best of all the shirts that we tried. Here is a shirt with 65% polyester and 35% cotton. Notice how the design seems pretty awesome, but perhaps not quite as vibrant as a 95% polyester shirt. And here is a color shirt with 65% polyester and 35% cotton. See how the transparent sublimation ink looks on the shirt? Colors look a little muddier since we're seeing the green of the shirt through the design. And here is a 100% cotton. You can see right away that the color looks lighter and more faded, but not horribly so. However, this cotton shirt has not been washed yet. So to test out how well a sublimation shirt did in the wash, I washed and dried all of these shirts so we could compare them. To wash a sublimation shirt, you wanna take a few extra steps that will keep your design looking lovely. First, turn your shirts inside out before washing them. That way the front of the shirt won't rub against the other things in the machine. Use cold or warm water and a mild detergent to keep the design vibrant. If you're using white shirts like I am, don't wash them with lots of other colors, especially new items that can bleed excess dye. So you don't wanna throw your sublimation shirts in with your new red sweater. Take your sublimated shirts out of the wash right when they're done. You don't want them sitting crumpled up and wet, right? And then you'll want to air dry them, which you can do either on a hanger or in a dryer set to air dry uh, or on low heat. The key is not to expose your sublimation shirts to super high heat again, as the ink might sublimate out. That said, your washer and dryer probably don't get up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit to reactivate the sublimation ink, so you should be just fine. So here's how my washed shirts look. Let's go in reverse order and start with the 100% cotton shirt. Most of the ink washed right out. This is why you wanna avoid using a mostly cotton shirt. The natural fibers just cannot hold onto the ink the way polyester fibers can. And while you might think this looks cute and vintage, the truth is, is that after a while, it will be all washed out. All of the ink will be gone. So, or you'll just see sort of a ghost, okay? Here's the color t-shirt made of 65% polyester. It still looks pretty good compared to the original. Here is the white t-shirt made of 65% polyester again, still pretty good. 
And here is the white Cricut t-shirt made of 95% polyester. It still looks bright and vibrant and remains the best option for sublimation. So if you want the best sublimation transfers that will stay wash after wash, look for shirts with at least 95% polyester. I love sublimation and I love how it just becomes a part of the shirt. It is really, really cool. Now, if you need any help getting set up for sublimation, be sure to check out my sublimation startup mini course at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. I walk you through choosing and setting up your printer with the right ink, show you in more detail all of the tools that you can use and the wide variety of things that you can sublimate onto way beyond just t-shirts, and then show you how to use software to print and press beautiful sublimation projects. You can sign up right now and learn at your own pace. I also have a group just for sublimation crafting where you can get help and tips from other crafters who love to sublimate too. Come join us at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group to ask questions, share ideas, and get inspired. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.